Studio Audio. How you doing? I'm feeling like a winner. Let's get started. It's time for. Welcome to season 10. I never thought it would happen. Thank you so much for watching every day. By the way, reupholstered. Mm. Sumptuous. The same chair, but reupholstered. Mm, it's velvet and crocodile-y and tufted. Sumptuous. And I have a bigger table because I have more stuff to put on here. And I'm talking, but the tears are coming down at the same time, but I refuse to let myself totally cry today. Although, no, no, you know, I'm very, uh, you know, cry, cry, I'm a crier. But as soon as I came up the block this morning, me, Kevin, and Kevin um, were in the car, and we came up the block, and out of nowhere, I started bawling. When I saw you, oh. Aww. Thank you for appreciating our show. And Fergie, you nailed it, okay? <laughs> All right, so everyone's talking about a whole lot of stuff, but I wanna start off with uh, Serena Williams and the big loss that she suffered over the weekend. Well, she lost to the 20-year-old, um, half Japanese and half um, Haitian, I think she is. Her name is Naomi. Uh, after the umpire accused uh, Serena of cheating, like getting, getting coaching from her coach in the audience. But when you sit in the audience, your arms are always flailing. What does that mean, coaching from a coach? Plus, she's out there playing tennis. Who's squinting and looking at, you know, arms flailing? <laughs> Who's doing that? This woman is at the top of ten tennis. <laughs> so... She ended up confronting the umpire. Perhaps you've seen, if you haven't, that's what I'm here to remind you of. Take a look. I don't cheat, I didn't get coaching. How can you say that? You need to, you need to, you owe me an apology. You owe me an apology. I have never cheated in my life. I have a daughter and I stand what's right for her and I've never cheated. And you owe me an apology. You yeah, it, it, you're a thief too. And then she took her tennis racket and crushed it in, in, yeah, she was just furious. Well, you know, not for nothing. A lot of people are accusing the umpire of being sexist, and I think he is. Before the race is involved, let's talk about the sexism. How many times have we seen the men on the court crush and talk bad? We can go back as far as, I mean, in my day when I was growing up, yeah. In my day growing up, John McEnroe would uh, take issue with everybody, using the F word, the P word, the C word, the whole bit. So I do think that this was sexism, sexism. However, when you're black, you always have to think, is there an undertone of racism? <laughs> always, always. Oh, Serena, look, I just wish you wouldn't have dressed it that way. You know. After the match, you should have gone into your um, dressing room, taken your shower, changed into your civilized clothes, and come back out there after gathering your thoughts. None of your people putting stuff in your head, but your, the, your own thoughts, because you're smart. You know what to do. Gather your thoughts in the shower, you know, and then come back out and address it. They want to see us angry like that. And you gave it to them. And then she was fined $17,000. Well, what does that mean? I mean, she's all over, she's all over TV. She's the face of Nike and all kind of stuff she's doing. Uh, one of those charge cards, she's. 
anyway, Serena, you'll always be. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> by the way, the black cat suit, you know what they were threatened by? Her fantastic body. Yeah. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. You know? And, and we talk race here on the show and hopefully you can get into the groove and you're not gonna feel offended. But we've seen white girls since as early as the 80s wear cat suits. But they're white in the front, they're white in the back. You know, this is before white girls started drinking milk. You know, you know. Now they got the same bodies. But, um, you know. I mean, you were threatened by her bombastic body. Yeah. And anything she wears is not gonna hide it. Certainly not a tutu, which as a matter of fact, emphasizes everything. I love a tutu, you know I do. Yeah. All right, so now Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Oh. Listen, I'm in the house having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a Clamato. And, 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 and people called me, you know, get on, you know, turn on the TV. So this is like major news. It's not just on the blogs. Um, Cardi and Nikki fought on Friday night at the Harper's Bazaar icon party at the Plaza Hotel, darling. Oh yes. No, they were not at the tunnel on a Friday night. <laughs> it, you know, who are you women? I'm, I'm embarrassed for both of you. And as far as I'm concerned, there is no winner. You know, Cardi ended up, first of all, they both, they walked in, they both looked great. You know, working the red carpet and their stuff. Cardi ends up leaving with no earrings, one shoe on, and her meat slumped. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, you know those white people sitting there are like, um, what? <laughs> sorry, it does become a black-white thing at some particular point. Like, like I'm embarrassed for you, and I'm embarrassed because you've g given them exactly what they sometimes think about us. Yeah. Do you understand? <laughs> like, I've never gotten a daytime Emmy for best talk show host. But if Abby, the new girl, oh, please, please. If Abby, the new girl at The View, wins, and she will because she's attached herself to a winning show, I'm not gonna lump her meat. I am not going to throw shoes. I would say congratulations, Abby. I am the Susan Lucci of daytime TV. Anyway, Cardi takes her shoe off and throws it at Nikki, but one of the security guards caught it, and so Nikki wasn't hurt. Um, apparently, the, the thing on her, that knot on her head was given by one of the security guards from Nikki's camp who was trying to, I mean, just a mess. Just a mess. And then, and then afterwards, Cardi posted a rant implying that Nikki insulted her parenting. Who cares? Who cares? Kids used to be off limits, but in, this, in th this day and age, when the entire world is imploding, even they're not off limits. People criticize parenting skills all the time. Who cares? You know what kind of parent you are. Who cares? Little Kim is in the studio somewhere right now saying, yep, I'm about to go back in. She's laughing. Remy Ma, laughing. Disgusting behavior. Well, lucky for us. <laughs> We've got a special guest correspondent here. She's been a friend of our show for a long time, so she knows how we like to hear it. <laughs> Look. Listen. <laughs> She's from Access and Access Live. Say hello to our longtime Judy, Lillian, Liliana Vasquez. Okay, Liliana, 
All right, so you were there covering the awards. Yes, so I was there reporting on the red carpet for Access because this is the event during Fashion Week. I mean, you were talking fashion's elite, all gathered at the plaza in couture, okay? <laughs> so both of these women hit the red carpet. I interviewed Cardi first, so that's a photo of our interview there. I have to say, she was in fantastic spirits. She talked about the baby. She talked about other projects. She actually was super humble saying that she used to have to sneak into Fashion Week and now she's sitting front row right. at Tom Ford with Anna Wintour. Great spirits, super confident, very, very calm for mm -hmm. Cardi. Mm -hmm. She walks off, continues to do other press. Then about 15 minutes later, Nikki hits the carpet. Everyone goes crazy because she's in this beautiful dress. This is Alexandra Vautier. She comes in. It's a good one. Also, it was a real good one. <laughs> um, I kind of couldn't keep my eyes on. I was like, oh, 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 yeah. okay. Um, so we were talking, again, very calm and cool for Nikki. Super subdued. And I was like, wow, she seems so chill on the carpet. This is going to be a great night for the both of them. They both look amazing. Right. I think they're in a great place. Right. Okay? Then she finishes press, Okay. within maybe five or 10 minutes, I hear screaming and commotion. So you run? I, oh, girl, I grab my phone and I run to the balcony. And here's what I here's what I saw. Nikki's dress was bright red. So I'm like, where's the red dress? Where's the red dress? Right. I know this is coming from Nikki and right. Cardi. Yes. Right. right. So I put myself right under her on the balcony and I shoot up and you Your see- Your footage. Good that's girl. my Good footage girl. right there, okay? So, thank you, thank you. Listen. You gotta get the facts, right? There's a lot of rumors, but you gotta get the facts. That shoe was thrown at 10.53 p.m. on Friday night. Okay, for the record, she left the plaza, walked right in front of me. I shot this video of her walking out at 10.54. So this happened swift and quick. So everyone's saying that there was this whole altercation. These two girls were so far apart, there was no way that Nikki or Cardi even touched each other. That bump on her head definitely came from a security guard. The rip on her dress also, I think it was in the tassel. No, they, ripped, they ripped the back, her booty was showing. Her whole booty. I put a little peach on it on Instagram because I didn't yeah. want to disrespect her. But here's the one thing that I notice. Okay. I'm Puerto Rican, and where I come from, if you're wearing earrings and you're about to throw down, what's the first thing you do? Take off your earrings. That's right, girl. You take out those earrings. Is she wearing earrings when she's leaving the plaza? No. Nope. So uh, it's my theory that she took out the earrings and she knew maybe what she was going to do. But regardless, it was May. Hem. People were going crazy. And then I waited, of course, because I wanted to see when Nikki and was going to leave. And Anna like, uh-uh, no more black <laughs> chicks up in. No, we are not dealing with yeah. the rap community anymore. No more. And then Nikki left at about 11.25, totally unfazed. You saw the photos. This is her leaving the plaza. And it was like nothing happened. But I have to say, I could not. Uh, yeah, nothing happened. Nothing happened. But Thank I have you, to Liliana. agree with you. It's a shame that this happened because both of these women don't have to do this. I don't care if you're at Applebee's or the Plaza. Don't fight, right? girl. Stop it. Stop. Thank you. Thank you. Liliana Vasquez, everybody. Make sure you check her out on Access Live and Access Tonight. Good reporting. We're back. <laughs> We're back. Okay. So Nikki, by the way, um, did give $25,000 to Elvin from The Cosby Show. You heard about that. He was the one working at Trader Joe's and um, Elvin, his name is Godfrey Owens. Um, so she gave that to him and also, which is great. You know, like you have a heart, you have, there's enough money to go around for everyone. Like why fight? Anyway, um, um, the woman who posted online, you know, a picture of him being job shamed working at, at uh, Trader working at Trader Joe's. Anyway, so Tyler Perry hired him. Yeah, it's official. Uh, Tyler came forward and offered him a role on his Oxygen show. Oh, the have nots on OWN. Okay, well, the prompter says Oxygen. I know. <laughs> we had a long summer, everybody. Right. Get on your game. <laughs> I could do enough bumbling and fumbling for the whole show out here. I don't need encouragement. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, thank you. So, so, okay. So, um, and then Mac Miller died, tragically. 
over the weekend. He was found um, in his home with a suspected drug overdose. And he'd been struggling with addiction for quite some time. He talked about it himself. He was arrested for drunk driving as recent as May. Now, you know, he was with Ariana Grande for like two years. And people were online blaming Ariana Grande for Mac Miller's overdose, which is horrible. Like, why did you leave him? He really loved you, blah, blah, blah. Then, you know, you went off and now you're with the guy um, from Saturday Night Live. You moved on with your life. In the meantime, Mac has lost his life. She's not to blame. Listen, in every relationship, the door is there for a reason. You open it when you don't like what you see and you close it behind you. Horrible. I really did miss you guys over the summer, but I have to tell you, like we went on this 10 city tour to promote the show. I ate my way through 10 cities. <laughs> oh, please. You know, when you get to um, San, San Francisco, you have to have the seafood. When you get to Chicago, you have to have the deep dish pizza. When you get to Atlanta, you've got to have collard greens, black eyed peas, and you, you know. I ate my way through the summer, so that was one big thing that we did. And the other one was that me and Kevin uh, dropped Kevin off at college. Yeah. And, and I was shocked, because you know, I'm emotional, I'm a crier. I didn't cry. I'm, I'm actually, because I'm, I'm happy for him. Like, you can't spend the rest of your life being what your parents want you to be. The only way you learn how to be who you want to be is by leaving them and going someplace. So he's not someplace close enough for driving back and forth, but he is close enough for an airplane flight. So the only reason why he's home today is because, and you would think he's here to support his mother, <laughs> season 10 and everything, but no, selfish. <laughs> he's home to uh, pack up some of the things that he's left behind, you know, his more clothing and stuff. And had the nerve to ask me to do it. <laughs> He's been down there for a month. He calls up, Mom, do you think you can pack up, you know, some of my stuff? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not, first of all, I don't know what your stuff is. You got so much stuff, damn you. <laughs> Sneakers every place, clothing every place. You pack, you know what? Book yourself a flight, come home. Only thing I could do is make sure boxes are here and you pack up that crap and get back to school. <laughs> and Aretha Franklin passed away while we were gone. That was very, very sad. Um, you know, she, uh, as you know, was one of the dear darling interviews of this show. She didn't fly, so she made me fly to her. She was absolutely sassy and lovely. We drank tea, the interview was online. I interviewed her during season two of our show. She made me wear a fascinator and she said, I, I want high tea with you then, I want high tea. She dictated everything, which was fine, it's Aretha, you know? And so she's got a whole lot of stuff that they're putting on auction. You know, everything from the gray felt hat, you know, the famous gray felt hat to the jewelry and stuff. And so I was asked this morning in my morning meeting, do I want anything? Right. And I, I, I said, no. I mean, she gave me the gift of a life by first of all, she always watched our show. So she knew the show chapter and verse. But she gave me Vera, Vera Bradley luggage. Uh-huh, yup. No, she gave that to me. And so to me, that's, that, that's the gift that's gonna keep on giving. And me, now it means even more. Rest in peace, Miss Franklin. Uh, excuse me? It's over? It's over, it's 21 minutes. All right, 21 minutes before a commercial. Look, I'm gonna give you more on the other side. <laughs> Look, including the new housewife in Beverly Hills, and why Bobby Brown's sister is furious about the movie. So grab a snack and... Yeah! Hey, Wendy, how you doing? <laughs> hey, here's to a fantastic 10 years. And we wish you many, many more from all of your friends at The View.
Congratulations. I was there on Friday, you know, at on the View. I don't know whether you saw. I met the new girl Abby and everything. I love that show. I tell you that all the time. Thank you. Okay, stop. Look, everyone's still talking about last week's Bobby Brown movie. Did you see both parts? I happen to have liked it. At some points, though, I didn't. It became a musical. You know, I don't need to see the full version of all these songs on stage. Like two and a half hours, you could have cut it down by a half hour if, number one, you didn't do all that singing. We get that you can sing, but we want to get to the coke. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. And number two, if you didn't spend so much time talking or with, with your new wife, which, you know, God bless you, you're married, but at that point, I checked out. I'm like, all right, who's this chick? All right, he's married to her. Why are we, then the commercial goes and then we're back and they're still together. I'm like, why are we, get back to the Coke. <laughs> so Bobby's got this sister, her, her name is Leola and she's furious about the movie. She claims, that, well, first of all, you know the movie was produced by Bobby and his wife, Alicia. So that's why you saw uh, perhaps a watered down version of things that could have been more watered up. It depicted Whit Whitney, according to her, as a villain, and Alicia as a superhero who came in and saved the day. And Leona lashed out on Facebook saying, the fakest movie I've ever seen, that is not Alicia. Yes, Whitney was feisty, but she loved Bobby. She's evil. You're sleeping with the devil. Well, you, you, my takeaway from the movie was, um, clearly Bobby and Whitney were super in love and super silly with each other behind this, all that dancing and, <laughs> and super silly with each other. Anyway, I've got no more to say regarding that. I, you know. Uh, but apparently, apparently this Leola is uh, currently shopping for directors and writers so she can do her own movie that she wants to uh, tell us the real, the real and the true. You know what, I don't care. I mean, at this point, I don't care. Do you, do you, you know? Do you want to see the real and the true clap if you do? Okay. On Bounce TV. <laughs> okay, so now Denise Richards, who I always called Saint Denise, she's the one with kids, the, she put up with Bob, um, um, Charlie, Sheen. Charlie Sheen's mess all those years. Well, she's joining the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh. Well, 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 reportedly they gave her a four year, $4 million contract, fabulous. Oh. She just got married though over the weekend to this actor, Aaron Pfeiffer. I don't know who he is. Do you know who he is? No. Well, you will. <laughs> He's 47 and apparently all the castmates were, I know Vanderpump is stewed. I'm the Grand Dame of Beverly Hills. <laughs> the thing is, is that I just think, and Denise has been here before. Denise is just a lovely woman. And lovely doesn't cut it on reality TV. Now, I'm not saying fight. This is not the Icon Awards. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm suggesting is that she's got, um, her father, who she adores. She's got these adorable kids with Charlie Sheen. She lives in a very civilized home. She's just, uh, you're just a nice, and, and you're newly married. Unless you bring it like Lisa Rana, cause I, I was, remember, I was the one saying. Uh, I was the one saying, you know, Lisa Rana, what are you doing? And you're not gonna be able to bring it. In the meantime, she brings it and she brought it and she broke it. Yeah. Don't you think Eve is at home right now? Eve the rapper who's now the talk show. Don't you think she's at home someplace rocking back and forth saying, damn, I just got this job. 
Look, we have more investigating to do. We'll talk about that tomorrow, the Les Moonves fiasco. Can't talk about everything. It's only, well, oh gosh. Okay, I'll talk faster. <laughs> All right. Stevie J and, e, and um, Faith uh, managed to make it through the summer. And look, they're sporting matching tattoos. And, you know, here's my thought. All right, Stevie has six kids by five babies' mothers. Can't keep up with his child support, owes the IRS a hell of a lot of money. Faith has four kids with three men. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> This is a reality show that I would watch. I, 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 must, I must tell you, because it's just so messy. And, and they must need the money to put this out there. In my opinion, I think they probably got it in a few times back in the day. Oh. Uh-huh. So they're not, they're not strangers to each other's bodies. You know? And then it's just like, you know how people don't think of marriage the same way anymore? Like, let's get married and we get a divorce or let's have a fake minister or something like, how do we know they're even married? But they're saying they're married, so I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> when does this show start? Well, <laughs> well, he has several shows. Hi, Norman, by the way. Hi. Hey. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I think she's probably gonna join one of his shows, Leave It to Stevie or Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. <laughs> Look, the whole summer the world is going to hell and I, I, wanted to, I wanted to grab my flashlight and come in here and turn on a camera and just talk to you. I, I, I did, I did. And you know I don't do social media, I don't like commenting like that, my thumbs are too big, I'm not like, ah, no. I can't really affect my stories through typing at you. I need the camera so you can see the disgust in my face. <laughs> and all that. All right. It's a good time for John Legend. You know, he's joined an elite, an elite organization, the Club of the EGOT. He, last, night, last night, he got his Emmy for the live TV musical, Jesus Christ Superstar. So, so now, He's got an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. There are only 12 people on the face of the earth that have done this, including Whoopi Goldberg. Um, but you know, and he's the youngest also to receive the honor. I bet you the sex last night was terrific. Right, right. Unlike the Moonbez household where the sex is... <laughs> Up next, everybody. Okay, okay, okay. I've been telling you all along, I told you last season before we left, I've been reminding you through social media that we have $10,000 to give away to a, a chance to, um, uh, for somebody to win, a, but a super fan. Like, like a super, calif like not what do I have in the morning for breakfast, eggs. You know I love eggs. You know, or lentil soup or something. No, we go in deep. <laughs> So, up next, our first super fan is here, so don't miss it.